So I've tested all those filaments and the results are in, um, as well as the ones that uh, Tim from 3D Filaprint sent me. Uh, I found some other samples that I had laying around that I'd picked up from various shows and things over the years, so I tested those as well. Before we get into the results, um, I'll just do a quick recap on what it is I'm trying to do here. With a mixing hot end, or um, a hot end that has multiple inputs and a single output, all the filaments have to be loaded all the time, uh, but they're not always moving forward, uh, or the ones that you're actually using move forward. The rest of them remain static, uh, and they're generally held at whatever temperature the nozzle is. Um, that's the way it is. So multi-input, single output, hot ends um, have, a, have a unique problem in that respect. And what will happen over time, an extended time, I'm talking, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours it could be, um, if the, f the filaments that don't move forward, regardless of how good the heat break is, at preventing heat from travelling through the metal parts, those static filaments, after multiple hours, heat will creep up through the filament itself. And you then end up with the filament that's inside the heat break at the top is actually above its glass transition temperature, which means it starts to soften. So when you then come to use that filament and you start to try and extrude it, because it's soft inside the heat break, when uh, <coughs> when the extruder puts pressure on the filament, instead of it pushing through, it can expand out sideways because it's above its glass transition temperature and then it will block the heat break. And there isn't much you can do about it. Um, as I say, the, the, the temperature will, the, the heat will creep up through the filament itself. It doesn't matter how good the heat break is. So to mitigate that, um, it's kind of necessary to use PTFE lined heat breaks. So when the filament is soft and then it's pushed by the extruder, it won't um, stick inside the heat break and block because the PTFE gives it a low friction service and you can push it through. So I've got two things going on. We've got to use PTFE lined heat breaks, um, especially if we want to print PLA. And then we've got this issue that filaments will be held at print temperature for extended periods of time and could degrade. And then kind of related to that is if you want to print multiple materials, they're all going to be heated to whatever temperature is required for the one that's being pushed forward. So if you wanted to print something at say 290 degrees C, then every filament that's loaded in in it will be subjected to that 290 degrees C temperature, which for a lot of filaments isn't going to do them any good. Uh, so that's basically what I'm trying to do. I need to protect these PTFE liners and prevent any static filaments, that those that are loaded but aren't currently being used, from getting too hot. So basically I have six heat breaks at the top, six filaments coming in at the top. And then they go into what I call a combining block. Um, I'm not going to use the term mixing block because um, mixing hot ends don't actually mix. So I use the term combine. So you can combine filaments together, but you can't actually mix them um, passively. So the filaments come in through those uh, heat breaks, which are liquid cooled. Uh, and they're very efficient, but we still have this problem with heat creeps through the filament itself when they're static. So it goes in through these lined heat breaks into what I call a combining block, um, which is basically each, each hole then is drilled at a compound angle so that they exit the combining block at a central point. And from there, they go down through um, into the nozzle. So what I have done is I've basically put another heat break in between the nozzle block and the combining block. So I can heat the nozzle to a high temperature, 
let's say 290 degrees C. But because of the heat break in between there and the combining block, all the other filaments that are loaded but static will be kept at a lower temperature, as will the PTFE liners in the heat breaks right at the very top. So what I needed to determine was um, what is the lowest temperature that I can run that combining block at, but still extrude the filament reliably. So the test method I used was basically to load each filament, set the combining block and the nozzle block both to run at the manufacturer's um, recommended print temperature. And that would ensure that the combining block and the nozzle were full of molten filament and then let the hot end cool down. Then after it had cooled, heat the nozzle again but this time heat the combining block to a, uh, a low temperature to start with and then maintain the temperature in the nozzle and gradually increase the temperature of the combining block until I found the minimum temperature that I could reliably extrude at. So now obviously what I'm effectively doing is blocking the hot end uh, and then increasing the temperature until it becomes unblocked which in the normal scheme of things is going to mean that the extruder is going to just chew the filament up. But I run reasonably, or I run fairly small um, pancake motors on the extruders. Off the top of my head I think they're rated at 1 amp and I run them at 850 milliamps. So what actually happens is when there is significant resistance to flow then the um, the motor itself will stall, it will skip steps. Um, it tries to push and then it reaches its limit on torque and it springs backwards again. And so effectively um, it protects the filament from being chewed up by the extruder. These Bontech BMGs that I use um, grip the filament really really well. Um, but if you have a blocked hot end they will also chew the filament up very quickly. So I didn't want a situation where for every filament I'm going to be starting with a blockage, chewing the filament up, raising the temperature and then having to strip the extruder or retract the filament and put new filament in and maybe clean all the teeth in between every filament. So the limiting factor then is, is the uh, extruder motor. Um, so that, that will stall before the point where it actually starts to strip filament. And that's a good little tip actually, um, regardless of what uh, extruder motor you use, if you use a high torque one, uh, it might be worth considering uh, limiting the current so that it will stall before, the, before it actually starts to chew up the filament. So if you do get a blockage in the hot end, that's what will happen. Um, you can fix the blockage, and you haven't got enough, You haven't got to strip the extruder down and clean it all out and everything, because nothing nasty will have happened inside the extruder itself. So one other thing to note is I also had some um, cleaning floss, uh, which was given me by a lovely young young lady called Susie, who used to work for Rigid Ink. So. When I changed between filaments, what I did was uh, I didn't bother retracting the filament that was in there. I just put the new filament in. I, I cut off about 50 mil of this floss and then started to extrude the old filament, put the floss in on top, and then when that had disappeared, I've got little tubes, I should say, I've got little tubes on top of my extruders um, so I can makes it easier to load them. So uh, I started to extrude and then when the filament was going down the tube then I put in this sort of 50mm or so of floss and then when that disappeared down the tube then the new filament went on top. And uh, so I extruded about, a, well more than a metre but just to make sure that I pushed through all the old stuff and then as I say I let it cool down and then heated again, uh, heated the nozzle to the temperature that the manufacturers recommend 
um, but started around about 150, 160 on the combining block and then tried to extrude and if the uh, motors were skipping then I'd increase the combining block temperature by another 5 or 10 degrees and try and extrude again until I found this, this minimum temperature that I could reliably extrude at. And now I've tabulated all the results. So this is the spreadsheet. Here we have the, uh, the filament, the brand, the name, the type. Um, it's quoted temperature range, the minimum and the maximum. The nozzle temperature, that's the nozzle temperature that I actually set it to. So in this case we have um, the quoted minimum of 180 and a maximum of 210, so I set it in the middle. So in this case 195. And then this, uh, the end is the minimum combining block temperature that I could use and reliably extrude at. So for this one, it was 155. So starting with these, um, uh, these PLAs, these are uh, 3D filler print ones, and they're all pretty much the same. Uh, the nozzle temperature was set to 195 for each one, and Pretty much 155 to 160 is uh, the minimum that I can run the combining block at and still reliably extrude for those ones. Uh, similarly, um, filamentum PLA extra fill and uh, fibrology mineral fill, uh, also 160. Uh, this one was a little different. This is a protoplastic conductive PLA and that needed quite a bit higher temperature, it needed 190 with a nozzle block of 205. Similarly the Haydale Graphene also needed 180 with a uh, nozzle temperature of 205. Uh, I don't know what this one is, it's satin yellow but I don't know who the maker of that one was. Um, but it looks like it's um, similar to the other PLAs that I've used and uh, certainly even though it needed a higher, or oh, even though the manufacturer recommended a higher nozzle temperature, um, still I could run the combining block 160 and reliably extrude, which was good. Uh, then we have a couple of HT PLAs. We've got uh, Protoplasta Composite Bronze and Protoplasta Black Carbon Fiber. Um, similar nozzle temperatures they asked uh, but for those two the combining block needed to be a little higher than it does for normal PLA at 185 um, then we have Polymaker Polymax Teal I'm not sure what it is I'm guessing it's a PLA because the uh, temperature range is very similar to these ones above um, and similarly the uh, Nozzle, minimum nozzle block temperature was 170. Uh, and then we've got uh, Dutch filaments R PLA. I think that's just recycled PLA. Certainly it behaved like the other PLAs with a uh, combined block temperature of 160 was just fine. PETG, I already tested the um, 3D filler print. PTG and it needed uh, 185 in a combining block with a nozzle set to 225. Uh, I've got this 3DX Tech Carbon Fiber PTG. Temperature range 230 to 260. I set it 235, 245, and uh, it still extruded reliably with the combining block at 180. Uh, moving on to ABS. I've got this uh, 3D filler print premium. ABS uh, temperature range 220 to 270 I set it 245 and it could uh, extrude reliably with the combining block at 190 uh, then we've got some PC ABS uh, protopasta black and Dutch filaments um, PC ABS both pretty much the same in terms of the nozzle temperature it should have been um, Quoted range 270 to 290, I set it to 80. The uh, protopasta, I had to put the combining block up to 215 for it to re extrude reliably. But the uh, Dutch filaments one, only 180, uh, although allegedly very similar. 
um, then Polymaker Polymide PA6 carbon fibre, which is carbon fibre nylon. Um, this is probably the most extreme one, and they did um, 290 degrees nozzle temperature was the middle of the range, and it needed the combining block to be up at 220 for that to be able to extrude reliably. Um, so that's the worst case one actually. Um, another polymaker which is flame retardant polycarbonate I guess. Uh, very strange stuff. As it was coming out of the nozzle it seemed to expand a bit like expanding foam. Anyway, um, temperature range 250 to 270, I set it 260 and it required 210 on the combining block. And then um, we got some PVA, Dutch filaments, PVA-M, um, nozzle temperature 215, combining block temperature 185. Um, another one I had was uh, some that I picked up from somewhere called, uh, and it was by Aegis, I don't know, it's Aegis or Igus, I don't know how you pronounce their name, um, but it's uh, Tribofilament, Iglidur, and I'm not sure whether that's L180 or I180, it's either a lowercase L or an uppercase I. So this um, 180, Agus 180, whatever it is. Um, the temperature range 250 to 260, I set 255, needed 205 in the um, combining block to, to, uh, to extrude reliably. Uh, then polypropylene. This was a, a nice one, um, 3D filler prints, own brand again, uh, requires 230 to 250, I'll set 240, and um, even as low as 160, that extruded reliably, it must be really low friction stuff I guess. Um, it could possibly have been extruded if the combining block was even lower than 160, um, but I didn't have the fan set up to uh, blow cold air over the combining block so I didn't bother getting it any lower than that. And then finally the uh, the flexibles, mostly TPU. A um, bit surprised that I could actually extrude these to be honest because I do have to run Bowden tubes, albeit short ones. Uh, but anyway they all, um, they all went through okay. Um, but they do need pretty much the same, or at least these filamentum ones, I had to set the combining block to the same temperature as the recommended nozzle temperature, as I said. Range was 200 to 220, so I set it 210 and I needed 210 in the combining block as well. Um, 3DX Tech was a bit different. This um, 3DX Stat ESD Flex TPU wants a minimum of uh, 220, maximum 240, I set 230, um, but I could extrude that even though the combining block was at 180. And then f the last one I could test was this Ninja Tech Cheetah Fire Red. Um, that also needed a combining block of 210 with a nozzle temperature of 235. Uh, last one, Fibrology, Fiberflex 40D, um, I couldn't load it basically. Um, I've got these heat brakes that are vertical and then when it hits the combining block um, it has to kind of change angle. Um, the This one I couldn't even load it into the hot end so I, I basically gave up on it. Um, it's uh, very flexible, something or other. I'm not exactly sure what it is but it's flexible. So that was very encouraging. Even the worst case filament needed a um, combining block temperature of 220 degrees, which isn't desperately bad. It does mean that um, any other filaments that are loaded in conjunction with it would not get overheated. And the uh, PTFE liners in the heat brakes at the top of the hot end uh, will be protected, even though I might be running a nozzle temperature of 290 degrees or more. Now, of course, just because I can extrude those filaments doesn't necessarily mean that I can print them. Um, the flexibles might be a bit of a challenge um, because I do run Bowden tubes, albeit short ones. So I'll just have to see how that goes. Um, as I mentioned earlier, maybe a hybrid version that has one direct drive extruder and then the other inputs um, conventionally with these short Bowden tubes. 
might be a, a possibility if I really want to uh, print TPU for example although um, polypropylene wouldn't be no problem at all and it does have um, uh, flexible attributes shall we say and then of course um, printing multiple materials is going to take some uh, some time for me to uh, sort out what happens in between tool changes there's more than just changing the temperature of the hot end it could have an impact on the retraction settings that I need to use and and print speed as well if you want to print TPU I think you've probably got to print that fairly slow compared to sort of rigid filament so um, fair bit to do in terms of writing macros and conditional g-code and all those sorts of things but anyway it's uh, progressing in the right direction and I'm encouraged by um, what I've found so far so uh, I'll keep you updated and don't forget if um, if you are finding any of this useful and uh, you did want to contribute something towards the cost of my filament and tools and materials through PayPal or Patreon or something, it would be very much appreciated. Anyway, until next time.